August 2012, um, you, Richie and Mike, walked into the rainbow after uh, rehearsing some tunes. Uh, you were yet an unnamed band. And um, it was at Eddie Trunk's birthday, actually, that, that evening. And uh, three years later, you have a name, The Winery Dogs, two albums. You've toured extensively, and they're one of the biggest bands in rock with your new album, Hot Streak, that's charted and making sales. How does that all feel? Feels pretty darn good. Uh, we're very, very pleased. Uh, very thankful to lots of people that uh, helped us along. Eddie Trunk, certainly one of the key players. Uh, great management, wonderful crew, and uh, people like yourselves doing interviews and spreading the word. We appreciate it very much. And uh, we're here uh, in Texas today for a show tonight. Another Texas show tomorrow, so we're we're playing a lot of the new songs off the new record, and just uh, all the places are packed with smiling faces and people digging what we're doing, so we're all very pleased. Awesome. So the tour is going great, Pam, because it's getting a, really great. Oh, yeah, it's getting a wonderful response, and nobody's said anything bad about the album. I mean, it's uh, it's really good, and um, yeah, it's crazy. I, I I haven't seen any negatives. I could keep yeah, no, Wait, there's got to be one out there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and it's funny that some of the reviews of the live shows I posted a review from Nashville, and uh, I, I just put on my Twitter I'm speechless. I don't even know what the, how to respond to it. It's, it's almost like we wrote the review ourselves. It was uh, in, in, incredible. So we're just and again we're, we're we we take a step back and we're just extremely thankful that people enjoy what we're doing. What we're doing is doing something for ourselves. It's our art, our expression, but. For me personally, a, a big factor in what I do is I do want people to enjoy it. I want to reach people, and I want to do for them what music does for me when I hear it. And if, when it when that's successful, I'm, I'm, I'm supremely happy. Bill, um, you know, I, I've been listening to it all the time, and I just want to tell you that it's, like, so different than a lot of what I've heard from you in the past. Yeah, Oblivion is definitely you, no doubt, but um, <laughs> there's like that country feel that's in Think It Over, and then there's, um, you know, I mean, my favorites are War Machine and Ghost Town, and all the songs are so different and so great. I mean, who, who you know, is it just like a one-person thing, or are you all involved in the making of it? Yeah, we actually get in a room and write. We sit down and... Uh, play parts uh, ghost town came from a bass riff that i did uh i forgot how war machine started but uh they all they all come from little things uh hot streak was a was a i played played that main uh riff that starts the song out and uh mike started playing along and richie jumped in and that's kind of how we write a lot, mostly lyrics uh are, are done by richie's because he's got to sing them so he likes to kind of craft his lyrics. I, I get in there with him and offer a little bit of advice on a couple of the songs. And, uh, but it's mostly Richie's thing, and we're glad about that because he does a great job at it, with a spectacular voice. And, uh, yeah, he does. Yeah, it's, it's, a gr- it's a group effort for sure. And when you come, to, uh, when you come to, to L.A., you'll be playing mostly Hot Streak, right? Or will you have something like Elevate oh. or... Um, we you split do. it between the two records now. You know, uh, when we did the we toured the first time, we only had one record, so we had to come up with some more stuff to play. Was, you know, we played the whole record and didn't have enough time to uh, fill the show, so we did every song, and um, many times, and then we added a couple things or a couple other songs by some other people. Uh, threw Shy Boy in there. And Richie sang a song he wrote, you know, in the old days. So, we, but but now we've got enough songs to do a whole night with all of our original material. We do a lot of new songs. I think we do seven. At least seven, maybe eight songs off the new record. And, and then, then what uh, about the old records? Will you have Time Machine or I'm No Angel, Elevate, any of those? You got all three of those, definitely. <laughs> I have. And a few cool. more. So we, uh, you know, we keep. Uh, you would try to look at what the people's favorites are, what they want to, what they want to hear, and then also we use our own judgment. We're gonna pop up a thing in there that uh, that we just enjoy playing. So uh, yeah, we get a good mix of, of both uh, records now. It's very nice. People seem very happy with the live show. So we're, we're glad. Now, you know, I've been a fan of yours for a really long time, way back since tell us. And wow. um, yeah. And so anyhow, I just, um, I think this is your best band. And I know you probably have favorites, pros and cons on both all your bands, but what do you feel about this band? This is definitely, you know, uh, Oddly enough, you're not the first person to say that. 
a couple of other bands, especially my old buddies from back in Buffalo and stuff, say, man, this is the best band you've ever had. And I, yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I'm glad people feel that way. I feel really strongly about it, too. There's a lot of things that kind of came together in this band with the three of us that have been kind of simmering and floating around for a while that really landed in the right place here. Generally, I love playing in trios. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Talos was a trio, and I love the trio format. Niacin is an instrumental trio. With three guys, it just seems to work better. I don't know. And then the fourth guy, no matter what he does, it always seems to make everything, decision-making, everything more difficult. Your communication lines on stage are more difficult with four people than with three. So with three, it really, really is fantastic. So, And Mike is a, you know, a powerhouse drummer, capable of doing anything, and loves pulling back and playing straight-up rock when it's time to do that. Uh, goes off uh, when, when it's time to do that. I'm in a similar vein. I'm, I'm like that. Richie's got a, an element to him, soulful, uh, uh, blues bass, uh, almost a little touch of jazz in there too. Uh, it really sets him apart from uh, a lot of the players that I've worked with in the past. And plus, he's, yeah. he's playing finger style now, so I'm, I'm, that's how I play bass. So things kind of sync together really well. So it really is a, a lot of things have come together in this band that I've been that I've, I've been floating around for a long time. We're pleased with it. So do you ever do the jazz thing anymore, jazz fusion, like with niacin or anything? Yeah, uh, that's still around, but, but uh, this is our, all of our main focus, so we don't have much time to do things outside. When we do, we uh, Mike's got a bunch of stuff that he, he can do on the side. Richie does a solo thing, too. I do a little niacin or even some Mr. Big, maybe in a, about a year and a half from now, we might do a little more Mr. Big. Who knows? Um, uh, so, uh, but, but our main focus is, is, the, is the Wandry Dogs. Yeah, and it should be. <laughs> it really should be. <laughs> You're right. I agree. <laughs> I have a question about Oblivion. Uh, you played working versions of that song at the Saban and the Canyon Club last year. So uh, I was wondering, is, is that the only song that you kind of had in the can when the album rolled around to do it? Or Yeah, that is the only song that came from, that did not come from our current writing session, which is, uh, and I'm glad we could write stuff fresh because we've been on the, on the road for a hundred shows. We got back in the studio again. We got a lot more experience together. Our communication lines are better. Our understanding of each other is better, not only personally, but musically. So I wanted to really write like that instead of bringing on some, some old things and reworking them. So we built, we built everything else fresh and, and even oblivion got a fresh treatment because uh, we, we, we were in mid tour uh, last tour and we, um, wanted to just have something extra because I said earlier we didn't have really enough songs to, to fill up the set so well, let's write another one so we, we, we did Oblivion and the words were never really done uh, Richie was singing something but he always points out go and look at the YouTube versions it's different lyrics each night you know so and I remember hearing uh, other bands that did that too I remember hearing Day of the Eagle by Robin Trower with completely different lyrics a live, live performance before they recorded it so there's some precedent to it in music I guess you. it's kind of good to play something live and then record it it's usually always the other way around. So, but, but uh, yeah, Oblivion is the only one we did that to. Sure, yeah, because that was an interesting turn because you played it at both the Canyon Club and the Savon. Speaking of which, and that's being from Southern California, um, you have shows coming up at the Canyon on November 5th and then at the Savon on November 6th. Um, you've played there with uh, numerous times with several bands, I mean, Mr. Big and, and stuff. Uh, what are your thoughts on the venue and the thoughts on those shows coming up? Oh, it's always great to play uh, my, my, my adopted hometown. Uh, it's always uh, uh, chaos backstage because everybody wants to come back and say hi, and, uh, uh, which we're happy about, but I've got a show to do, so I try to balance all that out together. But, uh, yeah, we love playing in the Southern California area. It's, it's, a great, uh, it's a great spot. I love living there, and I've got so many dear friends there, so we're looking forward to that. Yep. And any words about the opener, Kicking Herald? Oh, they're they're doing great. Every night they they do. We're in the back getting ready. We hear the crowd really responding strongly to them. So uh, it's it's a, it's really a great uh, uh, a good match. They're, they're doing a great job. An ultimate jam night at the Lucky Strike Live. You you were a regular there for quite a few weeks. It was pretty cool. And um, you played with past and present drummers like Greg Bissonette, uh, Matt Starr. Um, you played with Phil X, Nuno, Gary Sharon. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, Ray, Ray Lugier was up there with me one time. Right. Oh, Gary Sharon and Nuno played last week. They did Who Are You? And Nuno was the drummer. And <laughs> Great. 
Yeah, it was kind of like in a, the amazing journey, but you know, it was kind of a couple of subs there, but it was it was really neat. But um, we went, you know, we wanted to kind of get your thoughts about Jam Night and your experiences there. Well, the thing I love about it is it's it's just put together so well. I, there's a lot of jam nights that happen, and it's usually, you know, people kind of wander up and tune up and plug stuff in, and people are waiting around for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes, an hour, and then they start playing, and then they and whoever it is stops, and then there's another a huge long amount of time where they figure out who's next. And so it really goes slow, and it's painful, and then to be part of the audience, it is much fun. Well, these guys that run the, uh, the Lucky Strike Jam is great because they've they got a great rule: no pedals, no plugging anything. Go in, take your instrument, plug it in, and go. And there's no 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 uh, gear, you know. So you pop up, play your song, get off, next band up. So for the audience, it's great because they're they're it can actually be entertaining. There's not this long wait while everybody figures out what's plugged into what, and they they really do a diverse bunch of uh, music from all kinds of stuff. I was uh, in the back area and I heard. Uh, uh, time has come today by the Chambers Brothers. I said, what? And I walked out, and sure enough, it was them. It was the Chambers Brothers, and it was them yeah, that playing was it. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And they, you know, horn section and string players and sax players and straight up rock, punk rock, hard rock, uh, acoustic stuff, uh, everything. And it's, it's, it really makes an entertaining thing. So I love being a part of it as, as far as that goes. And there might be a surprise uh, Lucky Strike jam coming up in November, or so which I, I will not say anything about yet, but it uh, should be a good one. Mike Portnoy has never done it. Do you think he'll be there in November? I'm not sure if Mike is going to be in town, but if, if he is, we'd we, we jump up there anytime. Because oh, Mike knows good. a million songs. I, I know a million songs, so we can get up there with just about anybody and do any ACDC, Judas Priest, Hendrix, Zeppelin, Beatles, who, you name it, we can probably cover it. <laughs> One of the guests at Jam Night, Madam Mayhem, her album just came out last week, and you produced it. Uh, how did that come out, and how's it going? Uh, it's going great. Uh, the record really sounds fantastic. We've got some just screamingly awesome reviews on it and reviews on the production, too. I'm glad. I'm very pleased. With it. The first record I did, I've always been a part of just about every record I've been on, some a lot. Uh, I, I produced the first Mr. Big demo and... Uh, was always had a hand in Mr. Big production and the even Smile production, uh, and in every band and all the Winery Dog stuff. You know, we I've always had a hand, but I've never done anything completely on my own for another artist. And uh, this is the first time I've done I'm picking another artist and put things around or and built the songs and uh, did the recording and made all the decisions. And it was a, it was a great process. I really enjoyed doing it. And uh, she's very very pleased with the results and. Uh, uh, she's got some great pipes. A wonderful girl too. She's a very, very, very sweet girl. Uh, she's so hungry. She just loves music, loves singing, just wants to play. And one is dying to go on tour, and that's that's her whole focus in life. So I, when I knew that initially, that's why I was happy to produce something like that because I know they they, they really want it bad, and they and they and they they love what they're doing. Another concert you recently partook in was the concert for Charlotte at the Whiskey. Um, Bill X was the host, and. You went there and jammed and took pictures and with people and stuff. Uh, do, do you have any good memories from that event? Oh yeah, it was a, it was it was just a lot of great friends are there. You don't get a chance to see other musicians much except for the Nam show because everybody's on tour and gone and in town and out of town. And uh, Doug Pinnock was there. We hung out watching the bands. Uh, um, uh, Richie got up and played. Did great. It was amazing. Did a set with the solo band. It was awesome. Phil X got up and killed. He's just a great, dear friend of mine. And uh, we just, it was just a wonderful time and for a good cause. Uh, can't get any better than that. Well, we're on version three now. And oh, yeah. uh, we fine-tuned it down to a degree that I don't know what more we could do with it other than doing some cool colors and uh, doing some uh, cosmetic things. But it's, it's a really a finely-tuned instrument. They've done a great job on it. Uh, there's a lot of features on the three, which are on the two, and likewise the two that aren't on the first version but they all are kind of their own uh, uh, character and personality also I still love all all three versions of it I'm playing the version three now but at home and recording and even performing I've used, I use the two and the one a lot as well so it's their Yamaha's done great uh, their, their their quality control is second to none and their their commitment to music and artists and 
education in schools for, for young musicians is, is really, their, their company has a wonderful heart and soul in that respect. Cool. Is there ever going to be another Attitude Day at, in Burbank like there was in 2000? Probably. Yeah, we'll probably do another one. We're, uh, well, maybe, who knows, maybe next summer we should do one. Uh, it would be great. Uh, we, uh, I know we had a lot more Attitude users since then. Since then, the base has really kind of exploded. It's um, at the, I think it's a musician's friend, and um, Sweetwater are taking orders, so there's a lot more of them being sold, and I'm getting a lot more email. We have a Facebook uh, Yamaha Attitude Users Group page, and there's right. about, a, I don't know how many guys are on it, maybe uh, hundreds, I know, maybe a thousand by now, I don't know, but it's not always complete, uh, always Attitude owners, but guys are interested in the base or 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 something uh, surrounding the base, or they, they, they make their own versions of it by adding pickups to other bases. And, you know, but it's a, it's a great bunch of people, and I've actually learned a lot from them because they do their tweaks and experiments that uh, sometimes I don't have time to do, and, uh, and I'm glad to know uh, uh, that you can uh, do some of the things that they told me about. That's true, yeah. You've got kind of your own research and development team with how everybody's... Uh, <laughs> exactly, and yeah. And I get on there, and I, I uh, answer questions, and... Uh, uh, open things up, uh, you know, to uh, explain whatever I need to explain and uh, steer people in the right direction to looking up for a part or a, or a particular piece of gear. So it's, it's a good little forum and a great bunch right. of guys. Yeah, and you're so gracious with all your knowledge, too. It's, uh, it's really neat that you, you openly share things and you teach people things, and, you know, it, it actually helps music in doing that. And, uh, oh, yeah, well, that. you know... My, we're kind of we're all in this together. If I can help my fellow musician or, or anyone, uh, I'm, I'm glad to do it. I, I, uh, I've learned I learned all kinds of stuff, mostly on my own. But but it you know I didn't invent it. I found it and learned it. So I'm happy to share it. And if it helps somebody else out, uh, it's it's a fantastic thing. Um, do you see the regular audience, the regular fan base, or you see more younger audience? Oh yeah, uh, we see about. Um, I think it's probably three generations coming out. <laughs> Old timers, uh, their kids, and their kids' kids. So it's uh, we see a lot of young kids out in the uh, audience, and it's very, uh, very uh, uh, exciting to see that because they're you know a lot of young players. Like we do the dog camp. It's mostly all young folks, and they come out and they're excited about playing, excited about playing drums and bass and singing and playing guitar and all that stuff. So it's a, uh, I think uh, I, I dare say uh, a little bit of a change in the way things are, are going in the world where uh, people are, people seem to be looking back at music again, because I think a lot of the, all the electronics have kind of worn thin, you know, and to actually stand with an instrument and play and perform for people live, you know, and communicate with them in actual fact is a, is an incredible thing. You can't download, you can't fake it. You can't, uh, you can, you can only learn it by doing it. You can't get it off a YouTube video. So that's a, it's really a great uh, uh, renaissance uh, in, in many ways, I believe. Can you give an advice for a beginning musician right now at this time in this industry? Sure. Best advice. And it's really true, and I stand by it 100%. Get in a band and learn songs. You got a lot of guys sit around and want, hope that, that, that wonder when they're going to be good enough in order to play. I say, just, just start. Get in the band. Find people that are about the same level as you, maybe a little better so you, so you can learn from them. And just start playing. The best way to play is to learn songs. Sitting around you know, with a, a video camera, with YouTube, being yourself playing scales or playing solos, not going to get you anywhere. You got to learn how to play and learn and sing too. Play and sing, and get in a band. It's the greatest thing. It's what I did right away when I when I first got an instrument. The first thing I did was get in a band. You know, I didn't, you know, I le- learned how to play some chords, but. And, and in the interim, was looking for other people that played, and that was the thing you did: is you got in a band with your friends and started playing. And eventually, the, uh, the the lesser players get weeded out, and the stronger players move on, and your band gets better and better. And next thing you know, you're you're playing regularly, and then soon you're recording. And that's really the way to do it: uh, get in a band and pl- start playing songs. Can't beat it. And do you have anything you want to add, or? Um, no, I just appreciate you you both getting in touch with me and doing this today. Uh, we're looking forward to coming back into Southern California, coming up soon. We're at a halfway point of our tour right now, and the rest is uh, is, uh, is all looking good. Uh, we're, we're really pleased that people have enjoyed the record, and uh, we're, there's much more to come. <laughs>